everyone, it's Shell C from Paper Octio Studio, and today I'm sharing with you part two of the mermaid paper doll that I made for a swap group on Facebook. Um, you know, mermaids, legendary, red, legendarily, is that a word? Anyway, we all know that if they get out of the water, their fishtails go away and they become legs. They split apart and then they have legs inside there. And so I didn't think that I could make a mermaid doll that didn't already have the option of having legs. Also, the doll that I started with that I had already created had legs. So it wasn't like I had to make the legs. I had, I had, had to make the tail. So I, I took the tail off, put the legs on, and then I just laid the doll down so that I could trace a piece of... Um, deli paper which is translucent I could trace around the body um, so that I could make a pattern to create some sort of an outfit and this is Marty the mermaid front and she likes to go to Mardi Gras and party so I thought she needed a party dress and she's already used to wearing a two-piece so I decided to make a halter top and a skirt that matched so she could go um, dance the night away without getting too hot and sweaty I didn't think she would want a ball gown or, you know, jeans or something because I thought she'd want to go out and have a good time. So now I'm just drawing some sort of a pattern, um, an idea onto the deli paper using the lines that I created to make sure that it's, it's the right size. You know, I don't want to make her a size 20 outfit if she's only a size eight. <laughs> so I'm starting to work on the the waistband of the skirt. And this is the 140 pound cold press watercolor paper that I've been using for all my everythings on this doll. And I make kind of a waistband of the skirt and I'm thinking, how am I going to attach this to the doll? And you know that I like to have the backside look almost as good as the front side, if not as good as, you know, sometimes maybe it's a little bit less interesting on the back on the, than on the front. but you know what I'm saying? I want it to be outfitted all the way around. So I decide that it that I'm going to make it so that it opens up and and is attached on one side and then can open and shut. And I wasn't sure at that point how I would close it on the other side. I thought maybe I would use Velcro dots or something. Um, if you've watched the Queen Bee doll that I made, I used uh, Velcro dots to attach everything to that doll. And so that's what I was thinking at the time. I had since then changed my mind. But um, I have these two napkins that were sent to me in happy mail from one of my viewers. And they're bright and they've got bright patterns and bright colors and they just look like a party. So I decided to use them to make my little dress. Here I'm just using a little bit of white paint to cover up the lines. Um, I realized that the napkin was translucent and it would show the lines, the drawing lines. And also the way this opens, it makes it kind of open at an angle. And I knew that I wanted my napkin piece to be vertical up and down on the waistband. So I had to cut it into two pieces and apply it, um, you know, so that it wouldn't do that. So that it wouldn't, it wouldn't be angled. I, you can see it on the screen a lot better than I can explain it. <laughs> I just knew I needed to do that. I needed to do it that way so that it would stay vertical on both sides. Yeah, that's my story and I'm sticking to it. So I used Liquitex matte medium to put that on. And then on the back, I went ahead and wrapped the excess around the back and stuck it down with my Elmer's permanent craft glue stick. Um, I didn't want there to be a wide edge. I didn't want there to be paper on the edges that might try to come up. So I thought it was best to wrap everything around to the backside. And so I did that with the glue stick, but then I went over it with some of the matte medium just to seal everything in and make sure that it was all stuck down very well and wasn't gonna come up in any way, ever. <laughs> and then I was happy with that and I decided maybe I would add some trims. 
So this is some rickrack, white rickrack that I had in my drawer of ribbons and trims. And I added that along the bottom edge with some tacky glue um, just for a little bit of texture and style to make it more interesting and cute. So that's the waistband. Oh, I also got out some archival ink and I sponged it around the edges. I, I don't really know. I can't explain to you why I did this, what I needed to do that for, because it was just something I wanted to do. And it, there's not really a why. I just think it makes it look, look better. It gives it kind of a, a shadow where the shadow would be, like, you know, I don't know. I also use this red to stamp a few little flowers, little teeny tiny flowers onto the waistband as well. So then I needed to make the skirt part of the skirt and I decided to use this other napkin which coordinates very well with the other one. They're not, they didn't come together or anything. They just look great together. And so um, I cut a long piece of it and then I wanted it to have some weight at the bottom so that it would that it would stay laying down and not try to flip up or fold up. So I used this trimmed uh, grosgrain ribbon along the bottom just to give it some weight. And and had this, this doll been something that someone's going to play with or is going to dress and undress a lot, I would have fused this or collaged this napkin paper to something else that was most, more sturdy. Because you know, napkins aren't sturdy and it could, it could rip um, pretty easily. So um, I don't expect it to be played with. I'm imagining that it's just, it's art. It's just an art piece to either leave in its folder or uh, put up on the wall or something. I don't know. But um, I, I was concerned about getting it done and getting it in the mail and not so concerned about um, making this a uh, lifetime lasting skirt. So what I'm doing is I kept this, the napkin piece a lot longer than the actual skirt is, the, the waistband is, and then I'm pleating it. I'm gluing it down, folding it over, gluing a little bit more, folding it back and creating a pleat so that by the time I get to the end of the waistband, it all fits on there and it becomes a full and fluffy skirt. I think it's cute. <laughs> I think it's really cute. I would wear that. It almost looks Latino, like Mexican uh, dancing girl type look. Then um, on the edge, I folded over the napkin and glued the two sides together so that it all comes together. But then at the very top part where the waistband is, it's still open. So it will be able to be slid over the, the legs and then put onto the waist. And I wasn't sure exactly what I was going to fasten it with at that point. I did figure it out eventually that I just tied a ribbon and made like a little ribbon sash on the side um, to tie it together to keep it on. So then now I'm going to work on the halter top and I evened it up to make sure that it was, it, it was a little bit crooked. <laughs> and then I'm again cutting the base piece out of 140 pound cold pressed watercolor paper scrap here. And I need to have something that goes around the back as well. So I'm scoring a fold into it. And then I'm going to cut out both sides at the same time. And I will have a folded area on the side where it can open and shut. And then I end up just cutting that into a, a, a long strip. So it's, it's like a halter where it wraps around and then uh, some of them, some of them you pull over your head or some of them sometimes you have a, a tie in the back. And then I figured I needed something on the other side that could wrap around the other way and then I could close it with a Velcro dot. So I'm putting on this little smaller strap on the other side. And then when the smaller one folds over the larger one and then I'll have Velcro dot to shut it and keep it on. So there I am just trying the skirt on the doll. I figure it's a little a little bit dry now. So I want to make sure that it works. It works. So then this other napkin, I still have pattern on it. Not sure what I'm going to put on the top. And then I decide eventually to use a flower, this red flower, right in the middle of the halter top. So I just cut around loosely that piece of the napkin with some water and a water brush. 
so that I can collage that onto the top, centering the flower right on the top. So this this seems now a little bit bohemian, something you would see a gypsy wear or something maybe. I don't know. <laughs> Especially when I put the sequins on there. Maybe this is a bohemian outfit. I don't know. I don't know. It's just cute. It's cute. So same thing. I uh, fold the napkin to the back and stick it down using my permanent glue stick. And um, that covers up all the edges and makes sure that nothing's peeling up around the edges at any time. Like is possible if I had just trimmed it all the way around. It's possible that it could peel up or something. So same process as I used on the waistband of the skirt. It's taking me a minute, isn't it? <laughs> I'm also getting my fingers very sticky as I do that. And I think I put some, yeah, I put some matte medium over it to make sure everything's sealed down. Because this is just a thin napkin piece. And I go around the edges again with the sponge and the red archival ink. Just because I feel like it. Then this is going to be where it ties around her neck at the top of the halter. So I cut a couple pieces of this yellow, very narrow grosgrain ribbon that's going to be the tie around the top. And then I take a half Velcro dot and um, peel one side, stick it down, then peel the other side and then fold the, the top shut and stick that down. So now I've got a loop side on one side and a fuzz side on the other side so that that back can do what I said. It can fold over itself and Velcro shut. And then the strings will be tied around her neck. And then here I am putting the little little uh, bow sash to tie the skirt on. So this time the doll doesn't have any Velcro dots on her to put anything on. She's, she's a freewheeling and all the things just attach in a different way. So pretty happy with it. I'm I think it's really cute. I hope that my partner enjoys it. <laughs> so these two videos, the the footage was almost six hours. A little over five and a half. I think it was or maybe it was like around five thirty eight or something. And so Making it fit into two videos is tricky. That's how come there's a lot of speeding and, and stuff like that. If you do need to slow it down, you can just hover over the bottom part of the video screen and a little thing will come up that looks like a flower. And if you click on that, there's a place where you can slow down and speed up video. Um, I would just recommend that you shut the sound off because from what I hear, if you play it on slower, I sound really drunk. <laughs> This is what I've been told, and that's actually kind of funny. I tried it the other day. But um, at the end, there's going to be video of me making the folder that uh, you store everything in and I, that I mailed it in. And that is sped up quite a bit, so you might have to slow that part down if you really care about watching how I did it. So now I'm using, again, my Dimensional Magic glue stuff. Glue, I don't know, whatever it is. It's like... Uh, glossy accents. You can make, you can seal things with it or it really makes a great sequin and bead glue. So I'm decorating this uh, flower which is starting to kind of look like a mandala on the front of the the top and then I put a few sequins on the waistband and at the bottom of the skirt as well because it just doesn't seem like if the top has all that bling that the bottom shouldn't have any. It was not right. So this was fun using my pickup tool to um, pick up the sequins and pop them into the glue that I've put on there with the tiny nozzle on the, the Mod Podge Dimensional Magic. I look at it and I decide that there needs to be some at the bottom of the skirt as well. 
I decided to put a little bead right in the center there on top of the sequin so it's kind of like a layered sequin <laughs> and it keeps wanting to move it's like would you just stay there You're driving me crazy so if you've been making art dolls or if you think you might want to make an art doll leave me a comment and tell me about it because I'm having so much fun with this and this group is continuing as far as I know next month I don't know what the theme is but um, I'm gonna continue doing this I just think it's super fun and everyone's are very different they're all so different and uh, in my next vlog sometime next month whenever it is I'll probably show the ones that I've received so that you can see what other people have done with a the theme so her dress is done now I'm making the the sand castle that she lives in under the sea which is really just the container and folder to keep everything together and nice um, as I mail this and as my partner stores it I assume she'll store it somewhere <laughs> so I'm using this is confetti tan cardstock so it's like a 90 weight or maybe even less than that but it's definitely a cardstock and I've drawn towers and then I'm punching using a slot punch um, the crenellations on the top of the towers I also cut out a scrap piece of paper to make kind of a um, a door and a door that has a top a rounded top I don't know what you would call that just a rounded top door I guess for the front of the castle and these are my um, what are they come on think of it Stabilo <laughs> Stabilo crayons they're called woodies um, they are a water soluble crayon and so I drew around all the lines and the edges and then I'm blending them in to kind of make a shadow effect and then I'm also coloring the front door um, this is a girl's castle so I'm making pink and purple front door but I end up doing some other stuff to it but then I have this potting soil archival ink and I have a sand stamp and I'm stamping that all over both sides the front and back of everything um, here on the back side I'm just sponging around the edges um, with the same potting soil archival ink trying to make it look like sand and then I also stamp some shells on it as if it's been decorated with some shells stuck into the sand just like a little stamp that has three shells a, a starfish a starfish uh, and uh, like a clam shell type one and something else I don't know they're just stamps that I had on my shelf I don't have a lot of this type of stamp then this one has a big sand dollar on it but the stamp doesn't go all the way right around the edges and so I have to draw in the edges with a uh, fabric Castell artist pit pin but I end up making three of those and putting those as a decoration on the front of the castle just for fun This project isn't particularly intricate. I just wanted something that would protect the doll and it could be mailed and stored in that I wasn't like fussing too much. So I've glued a piece in there to make it into a folder. And then now I'm stamping the sand stamp and the probably the shell stamp too. Yep. <laughs> this is sped up to eight times fast. So this is where you might want to slow it down if you really are concerned about how to do any of this. I just I wanted to fit it into a 20 minute video so then I didn't like the way the purple and pink really looked and so I decided to blend that a little bit with some white gesso and then I'm using a stencil and the rest of the white gesso to kind of make a pattern on the door and then I think well this is pretty cool so I decided to put it around other places you know just to add a, high, a highlighted something on there then I'm making a sign that's going to say sandcastle and that goes on the front door and I also draw in some 
um, a door handle and some hinges to show how it would open. But it can't actually open. It's just flat. It's just for decoration. There would be no reason to open it. So <laughs> I didn't worry about that. There's hinges and a door handle. So the front of it's done. And, oh, I put some splashes on there and dry everything up. Then on the inside, I need a pocket to place. I'm, I'm going to make Marty be back into a mermaid because this month it's mermaids. So she wants to arrive as a mermaid. But then I want a pocket to put her land gear in. So her legs and her dress need to go in a pocket. So I just cut another piece. Um, stamped it with some seashells, sponged it around the edge, made a little decorative edge at the top, and then glued it down on three sides to make a pocket that I can put things in. And then I got out some eh, pinkish purplish pinkish cardstock and the cactus flower archival ink and some stamps. And I'm stamping Marty the Mermaid on a piece. And then on the other side, it's going to say um, on land or for land or something like that to put on the other side and that is what uh, will hold and label the places to put the stuff that I'm going to put in there on land for land on land okay <laughs> so you will see pictures of this at the end with the, the doll inside of it and that's pretty much it um, leave a thumbs up, leave me a comment, subscribe, all those things. Here comes your close-ups. Bye-bye. <laughs>